You can say two-time heavyweight champ of the world, Tim. You take it. Okay. Hey, everybody. Glad you could join oh, in. Oh, Dean's here. That Welch warrior. Yo, Dean is in the house. Yes. <laughs> <I got it. laughs> We're glad everybody could make it. Two superstars. What is that, Welch? Gas and Dean, Roger the Peter. Welch world oh. warrior. <laughs> I'm not okay. with Bryant Robinson, one of the hottest, and the, the girls, leave them alone, girls, leave them alone. Oh, yeah, they right. already, man, I'm already out the past you. <laughs> well, leave me alone. I'm glad you guys could come on. So I'm going on with Bruce and then, uh, Tuesday. Right? What's up, Bruce? How you doing, brother? Hey, how, are you? how are you, brother? How are you? But Dean, Dean, Dean don't have no uh, like podcasts, right? Yeah, he is now. We got him set up. He got me set okay. up. I'm going to champ. Okay. I'm gonna have you on my on my podcast too. But okay. listen, I have a, I have a I have a guest with me too. Uh, my young fighter, my young protege, uh, somebody who uh, who's like he's like my kid. I kind of mentored this kid and whatnot. And I just want him to say hello, Carlos Castro. And he he made uh, all the way to the Pennsylvania state uh, final, state championship, uh, Golden Glove state final. Uh, you run her up right here. Say what's up, Carlos. Hey, hey Carlos. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm just stretching my back a little. That's all. How you, how you doing, Tim? Everything good. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you in a while. All right. I, you, you'll be seeing a Wait, lot. Wait, yo, you don't remember me? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's when you get a certain age. <laughs> you know, it, was a, it was a little you, bit ago. You damaged good. Hey, but that's a nice bell in the background. I'm trying to cut it off. Don't nobody want to talk to me anyway. <laughs> no, I'm I'm right. this, oh, this blood green. I'm not going to answer. No, answer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, answer. 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 Absolutely. Hey, hold on. Let's go back to hey, blood. Uh, Let's talk to blood. Listen, man, what you doing? We on the I'm on the podcast with uh all with Bruce Gas, uh Brian Robinson. And uh, if a, a boxer that uh, hold on, let me take my that Welsh Road Warrior, the Welsh Road Warrior, my fighter, Mitch, my, my, my on it, buddy. Mitch Blood Green, Mitch Blood Green's on it. No, 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 yeah. no, hold on. Oh, what's up, Tim? Mitch, oh, Tim is here. Hey, hold on, Blood, Blood, just say hi to all the people on the show. You on the show right now, go ahead. You hear him? Yeah, a little bit. Can you hear him? Yeah, that's it. We can hear him. Oh, they can hear you, blood. Go ahead and say a couple of words and, and what you're doing real quick, and then we get off, okay? All right, everybody. This is Mitch Blood Green, uh, one of the top dogs back in the boxing day. Give us a couple of seconds, uh, blood. Go ahead. Say hi, blood. Oh, you don't see them, but it's like a radio thing. We got to get you on. All right, everybody. We we gonna um, we've been trying to get blood, get him some help. He's doing really good, really fantastic. Tell uh, Mitch. Call. Tell Mitch. Mitch uh, the doctor okay. wants dates for us to come up. We'll come up with the physiatrist to um to do the um. Uh, the rehab to put together a rehab program. We Tim, we got to get a couple dates together. Uh, okay, for the doctor. we'll talk to him. We'll talk to him and get it straightened out. Okay. Yep. All right, blood. I'm a I'm gonna call you later. Okay, champ. We got your back. We got your back. Right. Oh, they heard you. They heard you. Okay. Talk to you later, blood. All right, later. Be cool, be cool, champ. Stay blessed. Yes. Okay, that was cool, right? Oh, yeah, cool. cool as can be, man. Cool as can be. Hey, Dean, but you I, know what we're doing, I right? I remember that, huh? We're gonna analyze um George Benton's um Philly Shell style. Okay. okay. We're gonna put that on. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Hey, you know my old head. I can't remember everybody in and out here and there. I can't. If That's I can't, all right. There's, there's my family look good. Tiny, you, head up. 
If I have the glasses on, see when you get oh, wait till you get. Oh man, you got a couple of those, huh? Pip of those uh, three dogs. I had glasses. Wait. I went and brought five of them. These dollar stores are millionaires when it comes to these glasses. Oh, the glass. All right, champ. You ready? You guys ready to go into the fight? Hopefully we don't we don't get blocked again. We got our live. This shouldn't be. This should not be. Um, Let me get a pair of glasses. Copyright. Hey, <laughs> That's those dollar store glasses. One and Dean, if this thing's copyrighted, they 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 block the live. Now while he's not looking. <laughs> I don't mind eating on camera, Bruce. So, are you doing Bruce for? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great, Dean. I'm doing great, man. I'm going to talk to um, I'm going to talk to Buster Mathis Jr. on Tuesday night. I'm awesome. He's going to join me. Um, I I, I was on. talking to to Jose Rabalta yesterday. I mean, it's all it's all so beautiful getting in touch with these legends, bringing them back on here, and uh, and look, we got we got the professor up here now. Put those glasses on. You look very educated. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Yo, the people that make these in the dollar stores, they millionaires because I lost five, like five or six of these yeah, like the six times a month. Six times a month. You lose these. They know you're going to lose them. What they break? <laughs> they make you got a money. pair at my house, champ. Huh? Oh, uh, you got a pair at my house. And also, Bruce, Dean, put a link gonna... to your channel. And Dean, put a link to your channel in the comments. We, we, we can't do it because we have to be monetized to put a link in there. All right. Um, uh, hold on. I'll put your links in there to your channels. All right. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, any publicity is good publicity in YouTube over here, man. Me, um, we're, just, we're just trying to get people gathered together. The more, the merrier. The more subs, we help. We we feed off each other. We get these legends in there, man. And we, you know, we talk about Look at this guy. Look first. at this guy, man. Is there a talent <laughs> out here looking over here, man? I can't be you. wearing a hat all the time. I'm just going to let, I'm just going to do like this. You look good, champ. You look good, champ. Hey. You look good. <laughs> you need that hat. It's here cold. Up here. Visit these channels. This is Bru This is uh, Dean Williams, the Welch Road Warrior. This is a link to his channel. And I'm going to put up Bruce Gas, Jazz, and Boxing. Another amazing channel. For this. I'm going to get, uh, I got my boy Corey Sanders, uh, former uh, Chief Spawn partner, Mike Tyson. He's going to come on and talk with me. He so, raps. He's he's he raps. Yeah, he's real good. Uh, Corey's going to come on. And get Ivan Barkley. Uh, Ivan Barkley, uh, I just talked to a little bit, and Carlos talked to him a little yeah. bit too. And um, he's going to be coming on my show, and then I'm got I got Marlon Stalin too. Obviously, the two time heavyweight champ, you know Tim of the Spoon, you know uh, family right there, uh, amazing right. legend. But not just legend, you know, he had amazing, amazing knowledge too. Some fighters can be fighters, but they, you know, they can't teach. But uh, this guy right there, two time heavyweight champ, you know, uh, he has all the all the, all the tools and all the knowledge too, big time. We both spin knowledge off of each other. All right, you guys, you ready? Know, the best defense so because you can still put it out there. <laughs> oh, that's somebody my, just subbed to you guys. That's my massager. Thank, Thank Dan, you. Danger just subbed to you and Dean. Right on my ear. Right Danger. I, I, see, I see Danger. I see Danger in my in my channel all the time, man. Shout out to you. I see Nick M's Classic Boxing Channel. Now this is a man that you can get in touch with who has a library of fights. I mean, this man has, he has fights that, yeah. that I, I, I didn't see him since 1975. Yeah, channel, and I think, if, I think, you know, I think if you, I, I think if you talk to him, he might give you permission to show those fights on here. But Nick M's classic boxing channel, one of the best on YouTube, man. I'm on there all the time. That's pretty cool. That's great. Yeah. I, I, I gotta say this, I'm all about the European style of one, but if anybody wants to learn uh, the, the true Philly uh, shell, uh, there's nobody does it better. Um, you know, we're a true testament to the Philly shell, two time heavyweight champ, Tim and the Spoon. He really does know, uh, nobody knows the Philly shell like him. Um, best defensive heavyweight of all time, in my opinion. So if anybody wants to learn the Philly shell, check out his channel. 
Listen, I know how to do it, but there's a lot of people and non-boxing people that know how to do that shell. You know that? People that's not boxing that was in the street. Well, some of them, some of the boxers, trainers, not modified some of it, but there's a lot of people know how to do that. Right. You know? Yeah. It's not that hard, really. You know, and we talk about that. Thank you for the compliment, though. Of course. Now, the other ones and if too. you want to learn, please join uh, Tim's membership. Uh, there, you Just go right into our channel to, and click join. And Tim, you can join for $24.99. He'll analyze a seven-minute video of you shadow boxing, sparring, or hitting the heavy bag. Uh, or you can just... Want to support the channel? You can join Terrible Tim's Army. It's two ninety nine, and uh, we got lots of programs. Uh, so please look into that. But here we go. We got George Benton versus Ruben okay. Hurricane Cotter, and I'll let you guys take it away. Ruben Hurricane Cotter. Ruben Hurricane Cotter, man. You know, very very tragic story in boxing. Tim, I'm sure you you you've met Ruben Hurricane Cotter on a few occasions. Why don't you explain to us why he had to abruptly stop his boxing career when he was headed for a title I shot? Think, I think that's your job. You're a historian. All right, man. I, you know, I'm in and out. I think you know. I just met him and uh, became his friend for like uh, years. Uh, but you, you, you know, you know, you know. Um, I, I don't know why he went there. Was incarcerated and everything like that. I know when he came out, um, he did really good. Well, I mean, Bob Dylan wrote a song about it. It was on in New Jersey, and on, on a hot summer night, a bar was a bar was robbed. Uh, pe people were shot inside the bar. Yeah, there was, there was one witness, and he said it was a a black guy, and it, they came in here, and he fingered Reuben Carter, and and years later, it was proven that he lied in court, and Reuben had to do hard time. He did spent almost a, a better part of his life and his career behind bars. He missed a title opportunity. He missed millions of dollars in paydays. And uh, I mean, he was a great, great fighter. And uh, Tim, you met him a few times, I'm sure you. Know. Oh yeah, I was in his presence. Who is this fighting now? You, he's this the is Ruben Carter, he's Georgie on Benton. The left. He's on the Georgie. left, right? Georgie Benton is on the right. Georgie's in the white trunks, right? Yeah, yeah, that's George. I can yeah, tell yeah, you. Georgie's got that. Georgie's still got that hair. He's got that. Still got that full head of hair that he always had. Now he had that roll style, but notice I seen him get hit with a right hand two times and he shouldn't be there. That right hand should be over more. Now he's he's he know how to do the shell. Uh there's other ones that did it real good, but he rolled real good. He rolled like uh uh the light heavyweight um uh James Tony, he rolled real good, they said. This is actually the first time he seen I seen him briefly before and um um you know, I had made comments before. So how come he don't tighten his defense a little bit more than that? But him and my trainer sport twice. Him and Slim Robinson fought twice. Wow. So that's not a tight defense, but I'm sure he would tighten it up. We could see. We could see if he'd do it. See how he got it? It's not tight. And he's got the right hand there. And it seems like he should be doing a little bit more with that right hand. I hear in close, he's not getting it tight. Okay, they're just ex exchanging. All right, now let's see. He actually not doing the Philly shell. Maybe he done it in other fights. I did see him doing that, the shell. Well, maybe he's going to do it if he needed, if he get tired or something. He might resort to the Philly shell to save him from getting hit and the counter, do some counter attack. So that's him on the white, Gene. Uh, uh, Gene. That's him with the white trunks is uh, Georgie Benton. You know, you could see back then, you, you know, great fighters and one, a lot of a skill upstairs, but not a lot of skill downstairs, not really using their feet a lot, you know, not, not really using their feet to to uh, to do anything, pretty much just right in front of each other. I'll tell you why yeah. later. Go yeah, ahead. you know, the Philly shell is, uh, you don't really, you know, it's not about using your feet, it's all about using, you know, the from your waistline and, and you know, not rolling your shoulders, but like... You could see that footwork is non-existent right here, and it would probably help both fighters out tremendously. Well, well, I think too that um, a, a lot of movement, a lot of movement is for some guys. Some guys that can't punch, 
they teach you know, a lot of movement, and some of them movement move automatically because they know they can't knock the guy out, but they'll move a lot. They'll move a lot and figure out their punches. Um, um, and, and, and in terms of if you watch Joe Lewis and if you watch these guys, they relax because they know what their next move is going to be. They're going to even gonna slip and throw the punch. And it's beautiful when you see that type of art instead of moving around all the time. That's beautiful. But when you got a guy in front of you and the guy throw a punch and he missed both of them roll, bing, bing, and you see that beautiful stuff, um, that's what people would love to see. Um, and they love to see the other stuff too. But that's the art of it. Just now, guys, guys, tell me that. Tell me how the shoulder roll gets incorporated into the Philly shell. All you do is move your shoulders, but well, you got to stop here and anticipate a punch, right? And come come back here and then go to the other side. There's a couple of ways. Um, you you definitely use your shoulders um, in the Philly shell, but your your defense has, has got to be tight. The shell has got to be tight defense and you got to work from there see that that's the thing about the fairly shell is is it's it just like the champ said there it's a tight defense it's a it's a you know it, now the to me the the best defense is is your feet, these two you know, guys don't seem like they're doing it go ahead dean to me the best defense is your feet you know because you could just step away you know that's the most you know if somebody says like you know what's the best defense that you could teach a fighter is just to use his feet Get out of there. You know, Philly Shell is going to – you can roll and roll your shoulder and tuck your chin down by your shoulder and whatnot. But, you know, you, you still – chances – you can still get tagged a couple of times. Use your feet, you, you're gone. You're out of range. But it's a different format, how you use your feet and come in and out as opposed to uh, the Philly Shell, you know, is, is just right there, counter-punching, extremely uh, tough to uh, – to counteract it can be if someone knows what they're doing. If somebody's really good at it, like the champ is right there, is extremely effective. But, uh, you know, I think champ, even when I got a couple of guys like to put the hand down and whatnot, I still believe in, you know, the fundamentals. When you start a guy out, you know, the basics, keeping both hands up like this and letting them develop the, that kind of stuff as they, as they spar and develop their style. But well, we talked about that on the, uh, on the other videos um uh about that and i understand oh, yeah. you definitely supposed to keep both hands up but um when you want to when you want to release the opposite hand in an attack you got to get this right hand in the habit of blocking shots on both sides of the face here and here like one two's here make sure that shoulder is there so um i i you know make sure the shoulder is there and um you know if the hook comes just come like that you know, definitely you're supposed to have them both up here, but then as the fight goes on, or even in the beginning, you could bring it down and make sure that this right hand rules the defense that's in front of you. Make sure that right hand is the boss. Make sure if any one twos come, your hand is solid there and catch it, and the elbow is in. So if you get a body shot, you can counter back and, and things like that. So um, yeah, like that that's the first defense, and then the complicated, more complicated one is when you just leave your right hand and leave your left hand down here in a in the fight mode. Like any way you could turn, you could throw that left hand. But make sure this block everything here, this and that right and that left shoulder. Hey there champ, you know. talk about his uh right hand, Benton. What do you see there when he's um when he's fighting? It seems like I was watching, I seems like he goes back when he said, Okay, here we go here. We, let's do it real quick. I can slow it down too if you if you see something you want. No, hey, to Cham, hey, hey champ, uh, my my uh, my young uh, protege, right here has a question for you, Tim. Well, yeah. Hey, Tim. Yes. In in what fight did you did you find that you had to use your defense the most? When the ones that I wasn't in shape. Um, <laughs> no, the truth. When the ones I wasn't in shape. Uh, you know, because my career was so up and down, um, I wasn't really in shape all the time. And I'm looking back and saying, if I was in Mike Tyson shape, I would yeah. be a bad mammy jammer, you know? <laughs> um, so, so, uh, you, what you saying? What was you saying? And in, in what fight did you find that you just depend on it? That you depended on your defense the most? In what fight? Well, I, um, I, I depended on my defense mostly all the time. 
when when the bell rings, I want to make sure I don't get hit, but I want to make sure I be in position to, to counter punch, get you know hit and throw back. But yeah. uh, in in the fight, well, the major, a lot of fights I went in out of shape. So there's a lot of fights that uh, that I went in out of shape uh, because my business part of my bu- my business part of my career wasn't uh, going really good. So um, I couldn't focus. Um, you know, you're getting ripped off, or this is that, and so you know. Um, a lot of fights I had to go into out of shape. You knew the fights that I was in shape. I was yeah. in shape with Larry Holmes, but I was just a slight little bit off. I don't know. I thought you won that one. I thought you could have won that one. <laughs> what uh, now? Another question Who hit the hardest? My kid's mother. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, she. Nah, I'm gonna bring her in it. She do hit hard. <laughs> Who does? Um. Call the truth. Call the truth hit me hard and I stumbled. Bruno hit me. I got a look. You didn't feel it. This sometimes you get hit. You don't feel it. You just lose your balance. Uh-huh. But there's some punches you feel it. Yeah. And call the truth hit me. Call the truth hit me uh with a right hand. He kept running from me. If you watch his fight, he kept running from me. I was like, that is guy keep running. And that's what caused him to lose the fight too. But then he got me. Bam! The right hand. And I stumbled. Hey, and hey I champ. Down. Yeah. Champ, check this out here. Tell me what you see here. Um, he's gonna go deep into this shell. Now uh, stop right you. there. Let's right stop there. right there. See now, Georgie. Okay, you went forward. If you would have stopped right there, I could have showed you. All right, hold on. I'm gonna go back. There's a couple right. of situations where it's the same thing. As soon as he. So when he rolled to that left, to that to that right side, he doesn't put his right hand up. There. See that? See yep. when he rolled that way, his right hand is not up there. Let me let me slow it down. I'll put it in the slow Just motion. Check it out. Remember when when Georgie rolled to the left, to the right, he don't put his right, hand up the block. Watch this, okay? Okay, keep going. Now you might see it here. He's gonna roll. This is it. Okay, he threw a hook. Okay, he's coming. Let's see. Oh, he did put it. He did put it up, but he it, it didn't go all the way up. He stayed there. He it dropped yeah, he real did. quick. But in in a lot of this in a lot of this video, you'll see him not putting his hands up, Dean. Right. When he twists over there like that. So if you guys want to know what we're talking about, we're talking about him rolling. Uh, to uh, Georgie Benton rolling to the right side uh, and missing the punch on the roll on the like some, something like the Philly shell roll. Um, so if you step back, you'll probably see him. He does it, but he hasn't has his hands up. So there's another, there's somebody out there that, that does the Philly shell better than this that we, we're going to show you all in the video in the future. Okay. So so been you see, we'll show them. We'll find somebody that does it real good. Archie Moore was pretty good. We got to find, find, talk about Archie Moore too, Dean, because he did it. Okay, see, see now, Georgie in the white is really not protecting the left side of his face. He's just doing that movement there, and sometimes he touch that right here, Tim. Are you talking about this point uh, just before they stop the? Belt? Just before they stop. All right, but right he, here. Let's see. I'll- let's see. I'll Listen. slow it down here. So now he got his hands in the Philly shell way, kind of like it's not tight, but he's not protecting that left side. Let's see, watch. Oh, that was the fight was over. Hold on, I just got to catch that one moment. Yeah, he was open. No, he threw the punch on the other guy. Yep. But when his back was on the other side, it looks like he didn't have his hands up. There you go. Yeah, I think it, it's right, oh, right when they get out of this clinch. <laughs> my leg. All right, let's see if he spin around. Like I said, I don't know everything, but I know enough. I don't act like I know. I do the hook. Well, I got to say this, and I can say it because, you know, I come from Europe, and I, I spot a lot of Philly fighters, I, a lot of Philly fighters. I train in Shula's. Jim in West yeah. Philadelphia and Brooklyn Street and, uh, you know, his boxing. Oh, he blocked like that. It. Hold up. I'm sorry, Dean. He blocked that. Hold up. Hold up. He he blocked that. He had his hands up. Uh, let's go just a little bit more, and if we don't see it. You see, he had that? his hand up. Okay, the bell rung. He had his yeah. hand up. He threw it up. Okay. Yeah, but like I was saying, ahead, you, Dean, 
Yusef Mack, Frank Walker, Walker um, j just so many fighters like, you know, uh, Anthony Wasser, Ronald Bowdie, you know, um, just so many uh, really good Philly fighters. But uh, honestly, you know, believe it or not, on all those fighters, you know, the one, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't hit most was right there, to Tim Witherspoon, and he was the biggest. He was bigger <laughs> than all of them. And, and he had the best the defense. So, if it, we honestly, genuinely, like, you know, if anybody wanted to learn the shell, he knows it better than anybody, and that's a fact. I appreciate that. I, I'm not the best, though. I think Greg Robinson. Right there, I love it. What'd you see there, champ? We're not really seeing like the Philly Shell. They told me that Georgie, like my trainer and a couple other people, told me Georgie uh, fights a little like that. Now I'm actually seeing it, and he doesn't tighten his defense up. Okay, so somebody showed them halfway, or somebody just because um, it's not tight. It's not tight. Now, once you learn the shell, you do – a lot of boxers do release and let their hands down. You ain't got to be like this through the whole fight. You know, just leave them like this. But as soon as somebody starts throwing punches at you, you tighten up. So, I don't see no uh, – to me, he does got a little stance like the Philly shell and the roll like everybody do, does. And he throws that left hook. He throws the left hook and he got his hand up there. But tightening his defense up, like right there, says everything is loose. Everything is loose. It's not tight. What do you think, Bruce? What, what's your take, bro? Well, he, he's got Eddie Futch in his corner, and 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 I I just can I can see that defense that he's got. I can see the elbows in tight. I can see the shoulder rolls happening. I can see I can see almost like a. Well, I can see that Ken Norton crab in there when he gets inside where he's where where, where he's he's pounding the body. But uh, but George Benton, he almost looks unhittable in here, man. He's just he's got some great fluid motion upstairs. So I can okay. see where he's, I can see where he could tighten it up a little bit more. Um, the defense, but that that was back then. That's why he's, got a, you he's got a very aggressive, a very aggressive fighter in front of him, Ruben Hurricane Carter. No, he, he, he's hurricane. on the way. The Hurricane Carter. That dude was funny at times too. Oh, it's something he said. It was serious too. He said something. I can't. That's the name that I'm forgetting. This, this was crucial. He we was at some kind of event, and he put somebody in a place on the mic, and he told them something. And I was like, I can't remember that, man. That's a shame. Do you know what's crazy about it all the all this time and everything? And uh, what what year is this fight from? What year is this? This fight. 1963, May 25th. Now, isn't that something? I was only six years old, probably. All that time, and and uh, I, I, you know, obviously the 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 Philly shell has improved uh, by then, but uh, I still see, you know, where the European fighter would be more, even back then, like Henry Cooper and whatnot, they'd be on his toes, you know, more like uh, the European boxer be springing around like a kangaroo. Uh, these guys. You know, they're different styles, different, di totally different. Like, you know, they're more flat-footed. They're using all upper body and hands, and and um, but no pivoting, no angles in the feet. They would benefit from it, no doubt, you know, but um, that's, you know. So I see a lot of film fighters today. The one fighter, I, I see a Garcia kid. Uh, he, he, he's pretty good. Um, he, he likes to use his feet a lot and, and get I the like angles. I like his left hook. You know. I like What's his left hook. So, Dean, let me ask you a question. Is that why Muhammad Ali, when he moved around, was his footwork more similar to European? Absolutely. Absolutely. Muhammad Ali, um, you know, uh, that's why, you know, he would use his feet as defense. He would uh, have rhythm. He'd have so much rhythm with his, with his feet. Uh, you, you know, um, he would be in and out on you and you couldn't catch him. He was like, you know, move like a – or is it move like a butterfly, sting like a bee? That's move Muhammad like a butterfly. Ali, that's, like a butterfly. That's the, the way he would do it, like, you know, and, and uh, he would just float around and use his feet, uh, you, you know. And then as he got older and he couldn't depend on his feet, he got hit too much, and then, you know, that's what happened. Well, well, I think that uh, his his foot movement in the beginning was – it was really good movement, but it was just a show and tell, too. And – um. Yeah, yeah, like you said, as it went on, as it went on, um, um, you know, he got he got older and he couldn't do it. But 
his foot movement to me um, uh, was like a show. Even though he did it, he was like trying to show. And, um, and he probably didn't even think of it. He probably didn't even think of it, but he that's the way he like when arousing people. Uh -huh. What are you seeing here? When these what guys see, are on the road, what, I see, what are you seeing? What I see right here is if, if somebody had the, had the knowledge, I mean, it's almost like somebody just step over, get out of, stop staying directly in front of him. He's directly in front of each other, you know, and if somebody just step over, give him a different look, a different angle, give him a different punch coming from a different angle, a different direction, could change the game. But these guys are old school. They write, you know, mano, mano. They write in front of each other. They're just willing to trade, bang away. And, and you know, and you said it, you said it last week, Dean. Philadelphia, Newark, that area, they make them different over there. They're just tough animals. They don't know any reverse gear. They don't know side to side. They just want to go right through you, man. So this, yeah. this just like we see in watching on the film and um, their history, historian like boxers but does it mean do they make do they make mistakes do they make mistakes uh do do they not make mistakes um because of their name their history we got to look and see we get we you want to give them credit when you see it and if you don't see it um you, you know so if i see some one of their hands low you got to say it you know stuff like that um if georgie benton is not really doing the philly shell but we thought he was before you just gotta say say that and stuff. So, um, well, champ, when you say uh, it's not the Philly shell, like what do you see in there? Because uh, uh, me being a not a very educated on the shell, like you, what do you see in there? Because when I'm looking at it, I kind of see a framework of it. But what would you want to improve in what what he's doing? Georgie Benton. Georgie Benton. Um, Just tighten his defense up and a lot of his head movements. That's a, that's when exactly you say tighten what defense, said, what do you mean? Huh? When you hey, say Paul, tighten that's exactly defense, what he just said. His defense is too, his hands, his hands are too far away when he puts be closer. Um, it's like a bullet. You know, when your hands are close to your body, it's like a bullet in the chamber. Boom. Once it comes out, it's powerful and everything. So um, you you know, if you put your hands closer to your body. And and bend your knees, and then when you catch shots and fire back, it's more power than that than leaving your hands all the way out and throwing it from there. Um, but I'm seeing George Georgie, he should have his defense a little tighter. Um, I guess he has confidence when he's in close and he's when he's ripping them body shots. He's he got confidence, but he should bring his hands back because he is getting hit and and the other uh, uh boxers getting hit. So uh, that's that's my opinion. So he pushed off. I wouldn't push off. So his defense got to get tighter. He's still getting hit. Hurricane is uh, hitting him. Um, you know, you know the thing about Georgie Benton too. He was a he was a superb fighter, but he he just brought it to another level when he became a trainer. He you know he he was maybe maybe like a Freddie Roach, somebody who was it was he he was a, an A boxer, but as a trainer, A plus. I mean, he was well, he was he, he was a head trainer. Well, I hate to say it. I hate to say it. Manny Pacquiao made Freddie Roach, and it's it's hard, it's bad to say. Well, I, I, well, he, maybe if I, he wasn't with if he wasn't with Manny Pacquiao, if he wasn't with Pacquiao, um, we probably wouldn't be hearing from him. Well, I was just man. I was spitting out Freddie Roach as just an example, but 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 uh, Georgie Benton, once he became a trainer, once he hooked up with with uh, actually hook he hooked up with uh, Eddie Futch. He was the he was the third man Eddie in the ring. Yeah, he, he, he trained Joe Frazier for the Thriller in Manila. And then he went on to train uh, uh, Evander Holofield, McCall, McCallum, Meldrick Taylor, Cornell Whitaker. And, you know, he was just an amazing, an amazing trainer. So, I mean, he's, he, he's, he's doing, the, doing the thing, demonstrating here. But it seems like when he stepped back, he saw things that he lacked and he could bring it to other fighters. So he was like a great, great teacher. That's, so that's the thing about... That's the thing about being a great teacher is that, you know, all the things that that I didn't do or that I, you know, all the mistakes I made, I can correct them. I can correct them yeah. on my fighters. You know, yeah, I, can, I, can, I can, you know, look at it from a different yeah. perspective. Listen, listen I'm only saying that about uh, Freddie Roach uh, because um, 
I was only saying that because, um, you know, there's, there is a lot of trainers out there that made it to the top because of the boxer and people, uh, get that trainer, um, not knowing that he really, you know, um, there's a couple other boxes, but I don't have nothing against him. I like, well, how about, how about this? You think, you think, um, you think Buddy McGirt was a better fighter or a better trainer? I think he was a better fighter, but he was an okay trainer. He was I, a I, like that, I like that question, Bruce. I like that question a lot, and I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with the opposite. Uh, he was a great, great fighter, Buddy McGirt, but I think he's a much better trainer. Like you know, that's just my, like you know, that's just my opinion. You know, um, but Buddy McGirt, that's a great example right there that, that of um, uh, a fighter and trainer. But listen, Marlon Stalin trained with uh, Eddie Fudge, and uh, he was is his one of his first trainers. And then Eddie Fudge, uh, he had to fire Eddie because uh, I think he only wanted to come in like, you know, a couple of days for the fight or a week before the fight or whatever. And he was like, okay. You know, so Freddie Wartz came in to train Marlon Stalin. And uh, Marlon Stalin, uh, you know, stayed with Freddie pretty much his whole career. And um, so Freddie Wartz, that's it. Actually, Marlon Stalin was one of uh, uh, Freddie's first fighters, like, you know, like, you know, when he was starting out as a coach. So um, he didn't have a, you, you know why he, he had a, a, it was a good, it was a good number because, you know, one thing about Marlon Stalin, he keep his hands up. You don't have to worry about, you know, telling the kid to keep his hands mm. up. He keep his hands up and he's tough as nails. So he is. I, another great example of a guy like who had great, who had great defense. Who, um, who was that? M uh, Marlon, Marlon Stalin. Marlon, yeah. A, a disciple of Eddie Futch. So it's, I mean, these, these guys, they had to have defense in Philadelphia or else you weren't going to get out alive. You, you and had New to. York. And New York. <laughs> and, and Newark. Yep. And New York. But there's, there's a defense where you get just tight like this. And it's yes. really a lot more to, after they do yes. these, the punches and throw them on you, you have to do stuff after that. So, a what, are you, what are you seeing of... here, Tim? Are you seeing that he's not doing like what, what related to what you see here with him? No, there's no tight defense with these two guys. There's no, yes, defense, especially. Yeah, um, going. Um, plus, is that Scott? That's James Scott. You know what I mean? No, that ain't James Scott. No, That's no. Hurricane. That's Hurricane, right? Yeah, Ruben yeah. Hurricane Carter. See right yeah. here, like you know, there's nobody spinning off the ropes. You know what I mean? You don't want to have any fighter, listen, any young fighter, you know, watching this and listening right now. You do not want to back up against the ropes. As uh, you know, you want to be sliding off. As soon as my my calf muscle will feel that bottom rope, I'm I'm gone. I'm you gone. Mean, I'm sliding on that. Fifteen seconds. Hey, let me ask you about it. Do you guys? Do you see that this is pure like? There, these are, this is just how they think. Like you were saying, we're going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and we're just going to go at it until one guy breaks. Is that kind of how you see well, what they're doing? Well, see, they're, they're, they're in the Mecca. They're at Madison Square Garden. you got to give your best at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. This is this is make it or break it stage right here. And so they're both doing their A game. They're, they're, they're not going to think much about defense because they want to please the crowd over here. This is um, New York City, early 60s. I mean, Lord knows who's in the back room taking care, you know, counting the money. So this is this is serious, serious boxing right here, man. So, Bruce, you see, like, uh, what you're saying, too, is they're, they're not backing up. I mean, yeah, no, no. neither of them are backing up from each other. Oh, no, not at all. And, uh, and, and, and it seems like, like, uh, Georgie Benton is not concentrating on that defense. He's concentrating on scoring points because a lot of these judges don't give you points for defense. You know, it's, uh, it, it's a subjective thing. Judging boxing judges. Oh, so, uh, Dean, what do you, what do you see there with that? Do you see them just going at points and toughness here? They're just going at pounding each other. Well, like my like my fighter just said here. He said he who's uh, catching the jab. Uh, he does well at catching the jab, but it's, as far as the shoulder roll defense, it's not tight enough. I don't think because the left arm is way too low. He can catch, catch the hook pretty well, but for that, if he doesn't use that Philly shell, I think he gets caught too so much. I agree. If it were tight, if the defense were tighter, then yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't he block most of those shots. I'm kind of confused, not confused, because I seen Georgie Benton do the Philly 
the show one time. So this might not be, I don't know what this, this video is, but I seen them do real good, uh, a really nice uh, uh, defense. It's good though, champ. It's good. We got a little controversy right here. We don't have him, you know, he's doing something different. But you know, there's other tapes. I don't know what fight this is, but there's other tapes with him really doing it good. Um, so this don't look like it. See, the, 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 again, it's just me being a European fighter. You know, like where if I, I do roll with the punches and I learned that from you, you taught me that. You taught me how to roll my shoulder. You taught me how to turn my waist. You taught me how to turn with those punches inside. Mm -hmm. maybe Power and everything. Inside. But I got to, well, the only thing that I didn't, that I don't like about when the, the Philly guys, they do, they, they have the left hand low. So they turn their shoulder. Now the left hand is on my belly. It's, too, it's away. Me? I always used to like to leave my left, my lead hand, my more, my my main weapon. You know, uh, I'd like to leave that. Even though I turn, even when I turn away when that's coming, I still keep my left hand up so I can drop a hook on you. Yeah, um, but there's all different methods. That's all it is. There's all different methods of uh, what you could do with that lead hand, and then whatever ones you're good at it, just continue on doing it, or keep switching back and forth. You know, so. Um, yeah, it's like you talking about keeping your hand down here or keeping it up here. Up here, yeah, up here. You're supposed to use everything. You're supposed to use everything. Sometimes when I spar, I bring this back up and start doing working with this, and then jump. Then I switch back. So it's up to you to make that difference. I mean, you know, the, the change how you want to do it. It might be a third one you like. Now, sometimes I'm like this thing. Like, so you can see it. Now, listen. So, this is what I'm talking about right here. So no, you're, you're, you're going to put your left hand know. down low, right? And and then look, look when you do this, when, you do this when, when I turn, right? Like I turn, look where my you, left hand is. You're, you're leaning too far over. Just straighten up a little bit. You got straighten up right there like that. Let me get a little bit further. Let me get right about there like that. Uh, you can see me now. You can see both hands up. I'm going to get to, hey, you go right there. Both hands up, okay? I turn. I turn. The punch is coming here. I turn. And my left hand there. So I, can, I call it the sweep. I call it the clean up the mess. So I keep this up here. And then so whatever I turn, I catch it with this. I catch right here. But I leave this hand up here. So if I catch you and you're coming inside, you're coming inside with the jab right here, your head's right here, I'm going to drop a hook on you or a left uppercut. So it's either left uppercut or a hook. But if my hand's here, like, 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 like this, champ, if my yeah. hand's here like this, I have nothing now. I can't fight the left side of my body. Right side of your body is too far behind you, first of all. Your right side of your body is too far behind you. Um, but, but see, that left hand, there's several things you could do with it. As long as that right hand is there, there's several things. You could bring it up here. You could bring it down here. Um, and you could turn with it everything, you know what I'm saying? So the way as soon as you I turn though, I put I got no hand defending me on that left side of my body. You gotta, you, know, you gotta keep your right hand up there. Yeah, right. No, but there's nothing that, that I can use as a weapon. You 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 jab. I you hear you. Right, you bring the left hand up, or you can go like this. You're catching a punch, you can throw a hook. Just make sure you practice uh uh uh, uh, one twos like boom, boom. Get used to it. Put your hand in back of your face and and lean in, and then get your shoulder involved. Okay, right. so make sure the back of your hand. Yeah, is sure. your face. So what you're saying is, we have a door. Yeah, can you see me? Yeah, yeah right there. So what you say, like, like, so you do it more, more, more like this. Well, well, wait. First of all, to me, the right side of your body is too far behind you. If you can get your right side of your body over to the right a little bit more, so you can, yeah, there you go. Right here. More, yeah. Okay, so you can get that side uh, incorporated in this because it's too far. Right here. Used to it. Okay. There you go. My hand, my 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 lead weapon. Yeah, your elbow is on top of that. Put your elbow on top of that fist. So you're yeah. turning too far backwards. Right right. Right. Okay, now you can shoot your jab from there. But the reason why it's going to be hard for you to turn your hook, because I keep telling you the right side of your body is too far behind you. Turn your shoulders to the left, and you can throw a hook. Turn to the left. Turn to No, turn your whole shoulders to the left. Go back. No, go the other way. Now throw the hook. 
Okay. Then I, you- I, I see what you're doing. Uh-huh. I see what you're doing. So you go and you catch, come back this way, boom, left hook. No, you- but when you come back this way, you're going too far over, you can get hit. But then you got this hand right here. So the way I would do it is I would keep this hand up here. So I catch, I still catch with this hand, even with my hand, I catch yeah. it. Can't and then I just, the I, this is right there. I'll just drop the hook on him. Like, so you so want to get your, you want to get a little bit more power by getting your shoulder involved in that too, because you're just an arm punch. You just did. So more pr- practice, practice make you know you could do things better when you just keep practicing. So that shoulder, you got to get that shoulder and not just your arm. You got to get that shoulder. You got to bend your knees. You got to do a lot of that. So um, right now these old timers, right now these old timers, there must be a period where. Um, they're not really showing Philly shell skills or they just going at it right now. They don't care. Uh, but there is a lot of stuff you probably can learn from these two guys. All right. Yeah, now, I think Georgie Benton is getting the worst of this, this uh, without, without using, he's not using that Philly shell. He's not using that tight defense. And I think he's paying for it because uh, hurricane Carter is just connecting on his jaw. He's, you know, he's, he's landing the better punches. He, he's leaning in on him and, uh, Georgie Benton doesn't have any any opportunities to use any of those Philly shell move maneuvers or any defense whatsoever. He just has to trade punches. Georgie keeps spinning on his on the lead foot and throwing a left uppercut, or he's spinning throw a right. Watch him. He goes no, he went to the left. Now watch he go to the left. Oh, that's pretty cool. He keeps throwing that left hook, but his right hand should be up higher mm. around his temple, like Dean was like your head, like up here. When he spin. To the right, his uh, right hand should be up to catch punches so he can get that left hook off. So he threw that left hook with his right hand down. They banging, though, guys. Yeah. This is a war. This is a war. This, and, and, and raise it thin. Raise it thin. I, I, I was trying to keep track of, of some of these rounds, and they're, they're going back and forth. You got Arthur McCanty, too, the referee, the probably greatest referee in history. You see how Georgie stepped back and throw that left hook? He stepped back just a tiny bit. Let's see if he do it again. He's going to get in close. He's going to step back and throw that left hook. Watch. But not all the way back. He's just going to take a little turn. Watch this. Now watch Georgie in the white. Let's see if he do it. Okay. He leaned over. He should have had his right hand up there. But that left hook is per- is, is nice. Let's hope he do it here. Okay. Nice roll. Hands not. It's, it's not okay. Let's see. Okay. Hurricane probably got him good. Think he got him, but Georgie, oh, let's see if he turned that hook off. Hold on. It looked nice and beautiful. Let's see if he do it. Okay, he got the hook on. Hurricane coming at him, though, see? He got to set up. But that last round, he was throwing that hook real. Let's see. Okay, he leaning, throwing that left hook. Okay, fight is over. Fight is over. That was a nice fight. You can get some knowledge out of this, but... As it went on, it seemed like they were just trying to kill each other. I tell you what, that, that fight took a lot out of both guys. That really yeah, did. It did. <laughs> took a lot. That was a tough fight. Those are those are the fights when they when they have uh you know problems later in later in their their life. It's because of these fights here. That's why just... you have so many problems now, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know there was a lot of defense to it. That's where the punch drunk. A lot there was a lot more punch drunk guys um, back then, you know. They made fun of them guys too, uh, the boxers when they couldn't make it. There's a lot of guys that didn't have a lot of good defense, and then there was some some that did, you know. And um, it, that's why the punch drunk thing was back in the day. You hear that everybody talking about it a lot, right? Right. Punch, oh, he punch drunk, man. We shouldn't go boxing and stuff like that. Uh, but it seems like defense is a whole lot better than it was back then. Definitely. But them, the old guys that taught it. The I guys. Guess going, guy, I guess going to the 60s, going to the late 60s to 70 something. Those guys like Slim Robinson, um, Jimmy Arthur. Um, there's a whole lot of guys down with Joe Frazier's gym. Hank, Hank Durham, right? He's from down there, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't he down there at Joe's gym? Hank was, yeah. Hank Durham. That was Joe, and then Joe tried to, Joe tried to do some um, training too. He's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Joe, Joe had a Joe had a hot little stable there, man. 
God rest for you ever was, was you ever there? Did you go down? No, I didn't go down, but I I saw I saw um when he had when he brought uh he brought his kid uh Hector Frazier, my uh, Joe Frazier. Oh, that boy, Hector, little lightweight, look just like <laughs> Joe. He make noise like this. Ha, ha. He, yeah, he fought he, he, he fought Vinny Paz. I saw him fight Vinny Paz. He got stopped in the seventh yeah. round, and oh, Joe yeah. Joe was right there. Vinny and, was uh, too much for him. Yeah, Vinny was too much. Vinny kind of used him like a punching bag. But, uh, you know, I saw him when he fought uh, Machine Gun Munjin, who's a tough guy. Remember oh, Mike Munjin? Machine Gun. I used to be around him, too, in training. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and he, 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 he was he was, Yeah, he was, he was a big, big lightweight. Uh, he, he, it was incredible. But, yeah, man, Joe Frazier, he had Marvis. He had, um, oh, man, I can't even remember. Rodney Frazier. You remember Rodney? Right. And um and then he had Joe Jr. and and Brett Cooper, who I thought was the best out of all of them. But uh, hey, man, unfortunately, none of them ever became champion like like Papa Joe did. Papa Joe, he's a a living legend in Philadelphia. He yeah. he had he he just was another another one who should have been who should have lived like a like a king at the end of his life. And he's eating cans of Campbell's soup in his in his gym, living in the spare room. So man, you know, boxing's a, a tough sport. I spent time hey, with hey, him, yeah. Willie, Willie the Worm Monroe, all yeah. the old, old time guys. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, sum it up. Sum up, like, so give a good explanation now when you were talking about um, his Philly shell not being tight enough. Let the audience know what you exactly mean, because by appearance to us uneducated, when I look, it looks like it to me, but I'm not educated. But on your level, the master level, when you're looking at somebody that's using something that kind of looks like it, but when you said it's not tight enough, tell people exactly what you meant there. Okay, during, during the fight, um, you know, we had, we had talked and discussed even before the fight about the shell. We did many shows. Um, about the Philly shell, it being a tight defense, and there's different ways you could tighten up and, and, and call it the Philly shell. So, um, and, 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 and anticipating this this here fight we just viewed, um, I was thinking that we was going to see a lot of it. And I, and I wasn't shocked when, the, when we first started watching the video that I didn't see it, but it just started building in. You know, once I start watching the fight, I'm noticing the more the, the, the rounds went on, that I didn't see Philly Shell. I didn't can you see define? Can you define people what tight means as opposed to to like loose or not tight? Because I think that's where some people may not, for lay people, may not understand exactly what you mean when you say tight. And that wasn't tight. What what does that mean when 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 you're telling a fighter you need to tighten that up? Can you show it a little bit? Yeah, I can show it, but it means not keeping your arms close to your body. Or to your body. That's what tightness means. You can tighten stuff up. You can tighten stuff up this way. You can tighten stuff up, you know, and practice, and you can get it real tight. But So that's what I mean by um, those guys wasn't tight at all. Um, and and the Philly shell is just what you you say. I did it in a video. A shell is something that's like it's round, is, 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 is round and it's, it's, uh, it's well, I'm not going to say it's tight, but – they define in the shell as something that you can't break. You in your shell, you can't break. Everything is taken care of. So everything inside that egg is protected. You know what I mean? So, so that's what the shell is. Would you say too? He didn't like I when I watch you when you spar, you transition, you do the cross guard to this, and it's okay. Yeah. So also, do you think he wasn't using enough combination of defenses? It just kind of looked like he was just kind of staying in one particular um, defensive position most of the time. Yeah, I've seen that with both of them. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that with both of them. Um, it could have been a little tighter. Usually some guys start when the bell ring, they keep their defense tight, and then as the rounds go 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 on, they start loosening up and keeping them and taking more chances. Uh, but some real good defensive guys, they'll leave them hands down there, but they'll put them back up to their face soon as they see punches coming. You know, when you get tired, you get kind of like, um, you know, lack of days going stuff, you know, and, and you know, as the fight go on. So, um, you know them hands supposed to be up there. That punch come, you'll put them up there quick, but you're taking more chances because of maybe fatigue, maybe not fatigue, mm -hmm. just maybe just having them up. So, so Dean, 
sum, sum it up for us then uh, from your perspective, from a European. So people out there have to understand, Dean comes to a total different school of boxing. It's European versus American versus uh, Philadelphia. So these are different genres. And Dean, give, give me your perspective of what you've seen in there, real, just kind of sum it up. Well, if I was a coach of either guy, I could have helped them tremendously because any fighter I can help with their feet, you know what I'm saying, with their movement and they, they you, know, you know, with their angles and whatnot because that's right down my alley. And, uh, you know, I've been a ringer. I've been doing this since I'm eight years old, so I know how to, how to move in the ring and whatnot. But i got to say this. i never seen a fighter. There's only one fighter that I was in front of, but I was in front of many fighters, and I've seen a lot of fighters on TV that could actually intimidate you with their defense, and he's standing right there. Tim, <laughs> Tim, Tim. He literally you had a different, a better defense. Like, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I get in the ring with him, and he give you different looks, and, you know, what he's doing that to, to you know what I'm saying? You don't know what he's going to do. And uh, so he would intimidate me with his defense. And then all of a sudden, it's like, boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm well, saying? That, so, that's the big difference between me and you. He, Tim never intimidated me when I was in the ring. I think I actually unique. intimidated <laughs> Very unique. Very unique. I've never seen it. i never seen it. No one, lie Holmes, nobody, lie Holmes, nobody could could do intimidate me with their defense. Um, he was wasn't intimidated, was man. You wasn't intimidated. Get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you just made me. You, you made me fly off the fight to Jim. Take so, those compliments while you can get them, champ. Take those compliments while you can get them, bro. Yeah, okay, thank you. And Bruce, you close it up. Give us a little close it up with a little bit of your history. We got the historian and, and, here. Uh, you know, Brian, you're always putting that tag on me, and all I can do is is, is go back in my memory and, and think about some of the great Philly fighters. I mean, the guys like Dwight Mohammed Kwawi, got you know, jo Georgie He's Benton. from Camden. He's from Camden. Camden, Camden, Philadelphia. Ten minutes away. Ten minutes it's, away. The same, it's the same neck of the woods, man. Yeah. And, and, and now you, you got Danny Garcia. You got Danny Garcia's father, Benny Briscoe, uh, Louis yeah, Rodgers. Yeah. I mean, so, so many, so many great fighters. We had Marvin Hagler had to go down there and straighten out some of those guys. But even Marvin picked up a couple of losses there, but he picked up a lot of knowledge. Willie the Worm. Willie the Worm. W Willie the Worm, Monroe. Yes, you got that right. And Boogaloo Bobby Watts. I mean, Bob the street of Philly. If you, if you didn't have a good defense, you didn't survive, like I was saying. And that's why that Philly defense is world-renowned now. The, you know, these fighters, they're, they're all trying to incorporate that into their style. You listen to guys like Tim Witherspoon. You listen to Dean Williams. That's where you can get the real Philadelphia defense because these guys are in the ring with the, the people who invented that style. And, you know, they, they felt that style. They know, they know how to pick the lock in that style. So, I mean, this was a great show. We talked about the Philadelphia defense, the, the Philly defense, the Philly shell that goes in hand in hand with shoulder rolls. I mean, it's all, it, it, it all goes hand in hand. If you don't have a good defense, you're an incomplete boxer. So pay attention to the defense Sub to Dean, sub to Tim, sub to me. We talk about bo boxing. We bring, we bring the old school legends back again to, to, to tell it like it was, man. And we want to do that while they're still here. Give them their flowers, respect them, and, and pay homage to these guys. So it's a pleasure being on here, man, with Brian. Thank you for calling me. Tell Dean, them them. always yeah. great coming with you. And, and, and the great Tim with a spoon. Tuesday Tim. night, yeah, Tuesday night, I got another, another legend, the son of a legend. I've got... I've got man, I, I, I've got a dude who is his father fought Joe Frazier. His father fought Muhammad Ali. Great fighter. He himself fought Mike Tyson. If he, yeah, and, you know, yeah. We're you know we're gonna we're, we're, we're just we're gonna talk to legends. Tim is gonna join me. You know we're gonna we. We we strive to do this. We strive to we strive to bring on the the best fighters that we can get. And and, and I, I'm blessed that I that I have uh, Tim Witherspoon and, and, and Dean D D Dean Williams helping me out here. Brian, my main man. And but, yeah, the future is in the back of him. The future. That's in the back of him. The future, name. right? You know, we got the future, the present, and the past all in one room over here, man. That's right. Mm -hmm. Brian, I'm laying you. You're tag. You're the present. So. Uh, I'm just I mean, a technical guy who screws up all the time. <laughs> I just want to say, what's up to Argentina? Anybody that's from Argentina, Argentina today? Yes, yes, Tuesday night, man. Buster Mathis Jr. is going to be with us. 
Tim's going to join in the conversation. We're going to get some good, some good history. We're going to see what Buster's been up to, see what he's doing today. And I appreciate anybody that comes on there, man. So, hey, thank you, brothers, for having me on here, man. We definitely will do this again every week. And uh, God bless, man. Stay blessed. Happy holidays. Yep. And real quick, Danger wants us to look at a fighter, uh, Nick, I can't see, Nick Colonio Lochi. But we'll do. We'll, Nicolino, we'll, we'll, Nicolino Loach. Nicolino Loach. He was from from uh, from from Argentina. One of the finest defensive fighters of all time. Absolutely. Oh, I would like to see him. How appropriate yeah. that Argentina win the World Cup, and he's talking about this kid from Argentina. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, we'll we'll do a live. Let's do another live on that next time. Well, we'll, I'll we'll do one of the greatest middleweights in the world, Carlos Monzon. Ooh, Carlos. Oh, oh. That's that. That's Argentina right there. The one of the. One of the craziest and one of the, one of the greatest. So, absolutely, Argentina. Shout out to you for winning the World Cup. Yeah. Now I'm getting ready to cook right. some chicken. Yeah. Argentina. And then I'm gonna chill. I got I, I got my my rib roast in the oven, man. So uh, yeah, it's time. To I got work. a I got a nice big steak. I'm gonna sink my teeth into it in a few hours, man. So <laughs> life is vegetarian, life is everybody. Life life Eat is good. Please. Tune in next time, guys. Weeds and seeds. Yep. Tune in. And remember, please like and subscribe to all of our channels. And if you want to support our channel, please look in the link. We have a Patreon, or you can join the membership for our channel. Look at the benefits there. $2.99, you can join Terrible Tim's Army or get a, a video broken down, seven minutes. And Tim will look at your sparring, your, your shadow boxing, or your bag work. But take a look. We'll look forward a, to I recommend everybody yeah. should do that. I recommend mm -hmm. every boxer should do that. Every bo boxer, I recommend that every boxer watching and listening. I recommend them. I mean, priceless. Uh, you know, to get it done to have a two-time heavyweight champ, a legend, uh, a living legend. You know, critique you. Come on, people. What's wrong with you? Like, if you really love the sport of boxing, everybody should. You should can class up your man cave. Class up your I, man cave. I strongly recommend everybody to check out some time with him. We got a team. And, and, and we're, we're going to do it with Dean. Dean's going to be doing some uh, breakdowns of people. I'll be with uh, him. Yeah, we'll definitely. Get, we'll get him a membership. And, and we're trying to get former uh, heavyweight champ of the world, Pinkman Thomas, is going to join our team. So, awesome. Pink. Uh, you just talked to Brian. Um, and, and, and yeah, you guys is looking forward to he hasn't been doing nothing. And this is what we need to do. Get these guys Iron, ready to go. Amen. Iron he Bach hasn't been nothing since he retired. Nothing. Amen. I'll see you guys okay. later. That's what we're here for, man. Thanks. I'm signing okay. out. Peace. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. God bless. Bye.